Hey, how you doing? This is Tony from Six String Corner, and today I'm gonna do some acoustic strumming for you in a great classic song called Lion Eyes by the Eagles. This is a great tune. Well, let's get to it. Hey, before we get going, there's one thing that you're gonna really make sure that you have down on your strumming, and that is making sure that you've got the chords changing at the right time in the right ways. I have some great techniques on how to make that work successfully for you. It's in the link below called the Chronic Chord Condition. It shows you four different techniques that will show you how you can get transferred from one chord to another on time within the song. I think this is something that really help a lot of you, especially if you're a beginner or early or intermediate. And also guitar finger and gymnastics. It's another thing I got right below that. And that's a great finger exercise uh, set of videos that will give you coordination, uh, strength, dexterity, all those abilities on your fingers so that you can play the songs that you want to play. And that is what we like. All right, let's get out of the song. Let's talk about the strumming patterns first and then we'll get into the chords and then we're gonna put them all together. So the first thing about strumming is that we always want to have a very loose wrist and we want to be able to have the wrist lead the arm. In other words, what I mean by that is that as the wrist goes down, your arm's going to go down. As the wrist comes up, the arm comes up. You don't want to do stiff, stiff arm, I'm sorry, stiff wrist, okay? And you don't want to just do, use the wrist either. You want to be able to use both for a, a very effective, powerful strum, whether it's up or down. Now, regarding up or down strum, uh, when you're picking down or up, uh, two things about the pick. Uh, one is we want to make sure we got the proper twist. And what that is is that see this side, this side edge of the pick right here, this whole side edge. You want that to be striking the strings, okay? Not the tip. If you're fight, if you're doing this tip, you're going to have a lot of resistance. And that what I mean by that is if you're going straight up and down with the tip facing the strings and. Man, that could be really difficult and it just makes for a harsher sound, assuming you can even do it. I also recommend for strumming uh, thinner picks. Uh, I, I don't like super thin picks, but uh, like for example, this one here is a 0.6 on the, uh, for the Tortex, but you can get whatever kind of picks, but make sure it's sort of a lighter where it's got a little bit of flexibility in here so that when you're strumming, you know, that pick's gonna give as you're going over those strings, all right? So as far as that's the twist, so what you're gonna do is when you hold the pick, you know, I'm assuming you all know how to hold a pick, at least I hope you do. If you don't, this is how you do it, okay? And then what you wanna do is you wanna twist. What I do is I just move that thumb forward, just like that, okay? And that gives me the, that gives me the twist so that when I'm striking the strings, I'm going to be striking with the edge of the pick right here. It gives you a lot less resistance and you can flow through those strings much, much easier than if you're striking with the tip. You don't, you want to try not to do that. And make sure that you're twisting this way. Now the second thing that you're going to want to do is to have the proper tilt. So with that twist, you make sure you got that twist happening. So as that twist is happening, then you're going to, as you go down, your hand is going to go in this motion. It's going to go in this motion here, kind of like the beginning of a conductor's movement, right? And actually, up strum is the same way. So as you're going down, your wrist is going to go in, um, let's see, what would you call that? A counterclockwise position. If you're, if you're going from 9 o'clock, if you're going from 9 o'clock over to 3 o'clock, right? And that's how you're going to pick it, like that. All right? And then as you come up, you go in the same, you do the exact same thing. You're just going to go in the reverse motion. So... All right, so make sure you got all that down first. If you don't, uh, you might want to just hold off and just get that down on your right hand because that's really what's going to make your your uh, your strumming sound really, really good. Now, regarding the strum pattern, it's a fairly simple strum pattern in the verse and most of the choruses. All right, there are a couple exceptions. I'll get to those in a second, but uh, it's basically this: down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. So there's a down, and then there's four down, up, down, ups. Now those down, up, down, ups go, you know, they, there's, there's a shorter distance. I, I don't want to say faster because you don't play faster. You're just having more strums within, you know, a, a certain time period. So down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. And that is the bulk of the strumming pattern. So it... All right, so that's 
really the gist of it. And if you don't learn anything else, that you can carry that strum even through the chorus. Even if it's not played in the beginning part of the chorus, you can get through it. That's the primary pattern. So for the chorus, we have a different strum uh, just to start the chorus. So it's going to go like this, down, Now, uh, we're going to get to the chords on that one. In fact, we're going to start with our chords in the chorus, then we're back up to the verse. So it's just a down, up, down. And let that, uh, let that last down kind of ring. Then again, down, up, down. So it's just, it's very, it's kind of a little bit sparse in there. Now it's playing with, you know, the rest of the band going on. So there is some rhythm happening. If it's just you alone, you, you, you could actually, if you wanted to, add a little fill in there if you wanted to. It's just up to you. Yeah, I put a little extra up and down. If it was just me, I'd probably just do that. So that way it doesn't have that open feeling, especially if nobody's singing. But if you're singing, if people are singing, you can do it the way that the Eagles do it, and that's how that strum goes. And then after that, it picks up and does the regular strum. All right, so let's talk about the chorus, and then we'll back, and we're gonna back it up to the verse. The, uh, the chords we're gonna use is this G, okay, that I'm playing right here. I like playing the G with this, with the little finger right here, and the, uh, the fingers, position this way. So that's how I like to play the G chord for this part of the song. And then you're going to go to a C, and then you go back to a G, and then C, G. The other chords that are going to be in this are E minor, B minor, A minor, and D. The second part of the chorus goes back to the G. This one's called an F over a G. So uh, you hold that ring finger right there where it from this G chord, and you're gonna position the rest of these fingers to play an F chord. This could be a little difficult for some of you. Um, if, if you can't do that, what I would suggest you do is just don't play the G, and just play, you just play the F, all right? Uh, and of course, the F may be difficult for you too. If you really wanna get through this song, you can just play the B, G, and F, uh, I'm sorry, the B, G, and D string to make that F chord uh, sound right. But really what's played here is this F, you know, F over G, that's what it, we call it. And then this ring finger is muting that A. It probably doesn't really have to because the A is in that chord, but it kind of eliminates the dissonance with this G, so we don't want to have that. Problem. All right, and then we go back to C, A7, A minor, Now here's a couple of quick tips on how to play that uh, left hand. And uh, let me give you a close up real quick here. So when we're switching our chords, there's a couple of techniques, and you know, this is covered in chronic chord editions, so you can grab that in the link below. There are a couple of techniques that you can use um, when you're changing your chords, it'll help you transition smoother. So for example, if I start on the chorus and I'm playing G, and then I go to C, you notice that there's a common pattern here. These, the middle and the ring finger look the same. They're in the same position when I go from the G to the C. So what you want to try and work on is to not reform the chord. You go from G to C, and then just place your pointer finger to play that C. That's called a common pattern technique, okay? And then um, when you go to back to the G, you're gonna go from G to E minor. This is called the glued finger. You leave this middle finger right there from this G that I'm playing, and you bring this finger over and form that G. That gets you to the G really quick. Now you want to get to this B minor. You can take what's called the slide finger. You take this ring finger. It's the same, it's on the same string as the B minor. You slide it over. You don't want to hear the slide. Let's slide over and play the B minor. And then we go back to the A minor. You could go back and do this, which is a common pattern, actually. It's like this. You can play that same pattern. Just hold those strings, slide them over the top so you don't hear the slide, and play the A minor. Or you can just simply reform it. I reform it, but you can do it either way, and it'd be really, really cool. Uh, and then you go to that F over G. You glue this finger right here, and you form the F with these fingers. That might take a little bit of work. So you just sort of move those fingers around, try and get there. And then we got a C, and we go to a C to an A7. Keep the middle finger there because you're going to form this A7 like this. That's that A7 chord. And then, of course, with the A minor, keep that ring middle finger there again as you form that A minor. So it's there for those three chords. You never left, and it'll help you make that transition. 
and you got to go from A minor to D. There's not really a whole heck of a lot you can do with this one. You're just going to have to reform it. I would just suggest not do this. Try and just keep them just a little bit over those strings and form that D. Now the chords for the verse are G. So I play the same G. Before you can play this G, it doesn't really matter for here, but I, I keep it the same. And then you have what's called the G major 7. So you keep those two fingers there, keep them glued, remember that technique, and put the pointer finger on the second fret rather than the little finger on the third fret. Now I'm going to put the, this pointer finger on the second fret, play all six strings, and then you're going to go to the C. There's, remember that little common pattern. We're going to go from C, G to C, and then we're going to go to A minor. Keep that middle finger right there as you play the A minor. And then you're going to play this D7. Keep the pointer finger right there because it's on the, you know, the same note as the D7 and form a D7 just like that. You go back again, you're going to play that again. Um, there are times you're going to go G, C, G and you're going to have to be careful of that so that's where this, this, this these little techniques will help you with that strum. All right, let's put this together now with the right hand and the left hand and how the chords change. So here's how the verses start out. They all start out the same way with G then a G major 7, so all six strings except now, remember we said we're going to put this pointer finger in the 2nd fret, so G down, up, down, up, down, up, G major 7, down, up, down, up, down, up, C, down, up, down, up, down, up, two times, A minor, two, down, up, down, up, two times, D7, okay, then you repeat it. C, A minor, C, G, and you hold there and go to the second verse. All right, so that's pretty consistent. At the end of the second verse, you just do one little thing different. Let me just play that last uh, line there. She breaks her heart to think her love is only. So G, G major 7. back to the verse. Play the verse like I had shown and at the end of the last verse before you get into the chorus, right, there's this little stop thing. So I'm going to play the last uh, line here for that last verse before the chorus. You can't hide your lion eyes. We're right before that. So it goes D down, same as before. C, G, down, down, and let that ring out. And so for the chorus, you're going to go G, up, down, C, up, down, G, up, down, C, G. All right? That C is just one down. That G is down, up, down. Passing note is F sharp, second fret on the low E string. All right, and then we get to the E minor, we're back to the verse drum. E minor, A minor, E, G, F over G, C, A7, C, we're just same strum. goes on from there as you continue the song. Uh, the closing part of the song just sort of repeats that last line uh, a few times and then you're out. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you got something out of this that was Lying Eyes by the Eagles. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you can, and click some, the bell there for some more notifications on videos coming up. And you can even search through this entire playlist of what I've got on videos that on songs that might help you become a better guitar player. All right, thanks a lot for watching and rock on.